I have two short stories to share with you. Story A is my story, the story of a Melton Fellow. I want to explore and understand what the perception of global citizenship is. What makes us a global citizen? Is it exposure to foreign cultures? Is, it, is, is a person conversant in speaking many foreign languages called a global citizen? What, according to Melton Fellows, is the most important asset as a global citizen? I am looking forward to exploring answers to these questions. Moving on to story B. This is a story of Mansukh Bhai, who is a potter who lives in the rural part of India, who is untaught in English and probably all the other languages you and I would know. Mansukh Bhai, but now, is a founder of Mitty Cool Clay Creations and that they make refrigerators and water filters using just clay, cutting down costs and using zero electricity. There are many innovators like Mansukh Bhai who are working at grassroots level, trying to leverage their imagination and innovation and they would like to bring out their products into the markets and they are not looking at just Indian markets. They are looking to leverage their products into emerging markets as well as in the developed nations. Can we as an organization be the platform for these people to leverage their ideas into the global markets? How can we do it? For instance, if we as fellows consider our language diversity to be a strong asset as global citizens, we can translate features of their products in for helping them promote their products in the global markets. That way, they would be able to leverage their products in different, uh, different countries. In fact, Mansukh Bhai has had the opportunity to uh, uh, get his products to countries like the UK and the US in association with some other organizations like the National Innovation Foundation. And we can collaborate with them by using our language diversity for taking this step forward. So uh, if you have some ideas or perceptions which you would like to share with me, then I'd request you to come forward, encourage you to share your ideas with me, and fill my bag with your ideas. Thank you. The real voyage of discovery consists not of seeking new landscapes, but of having new eyes. Marcel Proust. Today I want to talk to you about an idea. An idea that is about sharing, about building, about nurturing. An idea that will allow you to do what you want to do for your community. An idea that will connect you to others who are motivated by the same cause. Personally speaking, I'm motivated by the idea of community development through local participation and empowerment. And that's how I came up with the idea of Resource Atlas. Resource Atlas aims to build community capacity through resource mapping. It connects people to development organizations, thereby empowering them. It fosters a partnership between donors and recipients. And how we do all of this is very simple. We use maps. The mapping process acknowledges the fact that individuals, groups of individuals, and local organizations all have the power to create change. And more often than not, it's imperative that they do so together. Resource Atlas uses the concept of resource mapping. This concept has is, is been around ever since, well, maps have been around. And the unique aspect of this project, however, is the motivation and the implementation. With my association, with my years of association with the Melton Foundation, I've come to realize that we as fellows have a unique tool to offer, and that is our knowledge. Our knowledge of culture and society, our knowledge of governance and systems, and local systems, our knowledge of processes. And that's why I'm here before you today. I want to use our skill sets, our network, our background, and most importantly, our passion for creating tangible effects, tangible results in communities. This week, I want to hear your stories. What is it that you are passionate about? What is it that motivates you? How do you want to give back to your community? What do you want to change about the processes of your community? And how would you want to do that?
This week, I'm looking for project leaders, for team members, for volunteers, and for experts. There's so many ways that you can be a part of this project, and I sincerely hope that you will join me in converting this idea into an MF initiative. Thank you very much. Hey, good morning, everyone. And first, let's close our eyes and imagine a beautiful picture in front of us, OK? OK. Darkened sky with blowing clouds from hundreds of smokestacks. Polluted water with thousands of dead fish on the surface. Acid rain pouring all over the place. And good-looking vegetables growing in soil with excessive use of fertilizer. Now open up. Let's think about it. Do you want to live in a place like that? Or do you want our future generation to live in a place like that? If your answers are no, we, it is time for us to think about the problem of chemical pollution. Uh, for many years, the, the reduce the usage of chemicals are on the agenda of, so, of uh, social responsibility and ecological responsibility. However, not too much has been done because it is against the economic incentive of chemical suppliers. Traditionally, the more they sell, the more they earn, right? And the customers are responsible for the usage and for the disposal. But they don't know as much as the supplier do about how to use the chemicals effectively. So this traditional business model is actually leading to the excessive pollution in the environment. In 2004, United Nations Industrial Development Organization started to promote the concept of chemical leasing, which is more product -orient, uh, more service-oriented instead of the traditional product-oriented uh, business model in order to deal with the problem of uh, chemical pollution. Uh, for eight years, uh, they have made a lot of progresses, but there is still problems remains, like uh, the dissemination of the information is still scarce, especially in those non-English speaking countries. So my idea is to utilize our uh, language diversity and uh, the, uh, the knowledge of the social network to promote this idea. For example, we could cooperate with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization to uh, to set up a website with uh, several uh, major language available and uh, to uh, set up accounting social network uh, to make this more accessible to more people. Uh, for doing this, you don't need to be expert in business, chemical stuff like that, as long as you feel interested and you want to do something for the chemical pollution, uh, I please check my wall and I would like to talk with you. Thank you. We want to help you. Five simple words. You can say them in any language. You can learn them today if you want. Yet, the idea behind them is quite complex. For example, what it is to help someone. How do you help someone, really? If you want to help a child, you can give them food, shelter, education, even higher education. Yet, the Igbo people said in Africa, Aruna Asunua, it takes a village to raise a child. And who are we? And who is this you we're trying to help? Do they really need us? Empowerment and self-determination have been found keys in the process of building a sustained development. And the, war, and the history of humanitarian aid is just full of help that just doesn't work. Yet, the needs still turn. We see how in our societies, the poor is getting poorer and the marginalized more excluded. And so bridges are needed and we need to build a fair distribution of resources. Numem is a nation word. It means ourselves and yourselves at the same time. In itself, the word doesn't differentiate. It is the context that gives the, special, the particular meaning. So when I'm talking about you, I could be just as well talking about us. Numem is also an idea that we can build relationships with, uh, with small but active and optimistic communities in order to bring social change to them, in order to improve their development through the process of collaborating and sharing our uh, ex ex uh, expertises. Numem uh, it is how I envision the Melton Foundation bringing positive change into the world. It is how I envision the concept of act uh, global citizenship at an active level, at an international level. And it is how I see the power of the network bringing change and, bringing, uh, and building social justice. Imagine uh, fellows from all over the world working together to build a well in a small community. Imagine that community sharing their story with the world. And imagine maybe in a not so distant future a global citizen celebration 
but with leaders from different poor communities sharing their story and teaching to university professors. Last Sunday, this Sunday, we celebrated, the UN celebrated the World Day for Humanitarian Aid. Their message this year was quite simple. Do something for someone, somewhere. If you didn't knew, don't worry, there's still time. Let's sit down together this week and let's see what, what we can do together, what we, new men, can do together. Thank you. <laughs>